What do we both want? Or rather, what's in the interest of justice? We work together. I get Tariq to take the stand and on the cross, you do your job. Is it a deal? In the interest of justice, it's a deal. Our episode five, the mid-season finale, the title was The Gift of the Maggie. Well, let's talk about that definition before we dive into it. That's a book. It's a biblical analogy. But the true meaning of the definition is the value of a gift is in the giver and not the gift itself. So I want you guys to leave me comments. Who was a gift giver and their value was greater than the gift that they gave? If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. It's me. It's the wife. Hopefully the baby will stay asleep or y'all might be seeing her again. And shouts out to everybody that's been joining me. My channel just hit over 124,000 subscribers. You guys are highly engaged. You watch just about all of our content. They even watch the video I did about you did delivering baby L. Okay. So we want to <laughs> send major shouts out to you all. Follow me on Instagram. Some of you guys leave me messages on the gram and I put videos up for you. And be sure to catch me and the Living Legend Larry Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights at 9 p.m. And it's subject to change potentially. Opening scene, I knew it was a dream. Yeah, right. Tasha was <laughs> sitting there with Tariq and her mama having a birthday surprise and then Raina knocks on the door. Did you know that that was a dream? I was hoping it was a dream. I was hoping they wasn't going to jump the shark and, and act like everything that happened last season was, was just uh, kind of make-believe or a dream. So I was hoping they weren't about to try to erase everything from the past and act like Raina never got killed. And mm -hmm. they did. Thank right. goodness. Right. They yeah. did. Um, that would have ruined it. <laughs> right. And, and a lot of people didn't like this episode. I felt like this was a good episode for them to try to be their own standalone episode. We didn't want to see Tommy pop up. Most mid-season finales never have major deaths. The real big coup de grace came at the end, and we'll discuss that when we get there. Next scene, we saw punk-ass Cooper Sack, excuse me, Nancy, punk-ass Nancy, pop up at Tamika house, basically telling her not to take the stand. And she was like, bruh, I'm taking that stand, mm -hmm. and I'm telling the truth on your ass. Right. And then they gave a couple of reveals about Tamika pretty much know Tariq shot Ghost, right. but she hadn't really said nothing. Uh -huh. And in this exchange, Cooper Sacks lets her know that he was on the scene, mm -hmm. and he told her that. Did you think that there was a chance in hell she was going to say, I'm not taking that stand? Oh, heck no. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's a smart one. <laughs> and she knows good and well that she she ain't taking a fall for sacks of all people. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, Nancy ain't worth I'm, taking a fall. I'm surprised she let him in her house. <laughs> Me too. Boy, they, they spent a whole lot of time in her house this right. episode, didn't they? I right. mean, you think she had the family cookout at her mm -hmm. house. Everybody was over there getting a turn. Like her address is posted on a billboard somewhere. She must be on one of those dating websites. She must be on Bumble. You ladies hit me up with a comment if y'all know about that Bumble. Tamika put her address oh, on Bumble. <laughs> Next scene, Monet is trying to teach Diana how to really get in a reek's head. <laughs> Giving her... All kinds of bad advice. Now, there was some truth in some of her advice. Mm -hmm. Not all of it. There was a little bit of truth in, you know, the things that make a man articulate. But in the end, she tried to show that off by treating Officer Rico Suave indifferently. What did you think about that scene? Huh. I, I wish she would just leave Diana alone and let her go to school. I'm sitting here looking at this lady train her daughter to be in the quote unquote game. Mm -hmm. And the daughter clearly doesn't doesn't want to be a part of it. Nope. And I'm wondering like, okay, what reasons would that what what reasons would she have to try to keep Diana in the game? One, she lonely. Her husband is in jail and she needs somebody, she needs a female okay. com comrade to to help uh kind of run the business. Why else would she what she I don't know why she would Try to keep her daughter in it. Other than that, she's just lonely. It's a family business. It's a family business, but you know longevity in, in that business isn't... Unless she feels like they're, they're the exception to the rule. Well, maybe she feels like women are the exception to the rule. In all these major crime cases, how many times do you hear about mm -hmm. a woman mm -hmm. being taken down as the queen pin? Mm -hmm. Hardly ever. Which is kind of highlights this whole 
this whole thing getting Tasha out of jail, mm -hmm. Queenpin, they hardly, that statute from what I read is, has been ruled on 2% of the time in cases. Mm -hmm. So maybe she's thinking that if I teach Diana, you know, as a woman, she's not going to have as much to worry about versus a man. And she knows Cain is too hot-headed to do it. Mm -hmm. They later reveal in this episode, everybody know Drew is gay. They know that's his weakness. So she wants Diana to take over the family business. So she depended on Diana. So basically she got the three stooges running around as kids trying to run this business. And she need Diana to take over the reins. In essence, but then we find out that her new son is Tariq. <laughs> at the end now. of this. Uh, but so yeah. let's talk about how Kane and Reek saw Officer Rico Suave leaving. Mm -hmm. And that was the door opening for Tariq to start playing chess with Kane. Did you notice how he was attacking Kane and how he was saying, you know, you can't trust these cops, how much right. they paying you. And and Kane over there just giving up all the information. Just right. like a, he's Speaking just like giving it up. Yeah, like, like some Michael chick Bird. that just graduated high school was on college for the first just giving it yeah, up. Yeah, I think he was just mad. I mean, he was mad and so he probably let his guard down and started complaining to Tariq about what mm -hmm. was going on. But Tariq played on it too. And he I did. had to laugh at that one part mm -hmm. when um he asked you know, he said, you know, dealing with these cops, you know, I'm sure it's going to cost a lot. How much is it costing you? And he asked to ask, uh, ask Kane, well, how much is, how much are y'all paying him? And they didn't say and nothing. And then he smirked, thinking like, you know, uh, he, she, he, she paying him she in, in. Panty draws. <laughs> That's what she paying him. He smirked. <laughs> and Kane, I'm sure, was sitting there thinking like. This 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 yeah, N word right, smart. Right, right. He's smart. I need to roll with him. Mm -mm -mm. Then the next scene we see Cooper Sacks roll up, meet up with Tariq, basically telling Tariq he needs to get his mom to drop the case, yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. Um and from that, you know, is it's the combination is gonna be Tamika. That was the basic subject of that conversation. But after that, Tariq calls his mom to say, Hey mom. You got to get McLean to chill out with mm -hmm. Tamika. She can't take the stand. Mm -hmm. And he reveals to the mama <laughs> for the first time the situation with him and Cooper Sacks, him popping up. Right. And the mama was just basically giving it to him. Like, you know different from your daddy. Mm -hmm. Speak on that, honey. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's what they were doing on power. All, all you know, all on power. Mm -hmm. Um but for the, I, for you know, you would have thought that he would have been told his mama he, he saw Cooper Sack. You would think so. Made the deal. Yeah, but both of them are again keeping secrets from each other. So he lying to her, and you know, inadvertently, and she's inadvertently lying to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's how it goes. This, ladies and gentlemen, they're embodying ghosts in Tariq. Whether you mm -hmm. like it or not, mm -hmm. they're embodying ghosts in Tariq. I did it. He was like, I did it to protect you, and didn't go say that to Tariq too. Yeah, I was doing yeah. it to protect you. But but. But everybody says they lie to protect you. Didn't our president say that about coronavirus? Oh, whatever. Don't yeah. most men say that when they're cheating on their wife? We're not telling you because we're protecting oh, you. Whatever. You you denying that this is what people do in this country? Mm. It's the truth. I know. It's just the truth. It happens. Not saying it's right or wrong, but it's just what happens. But then you're getting mad and both of y'all doing it. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. So you can't be mad. Right. You know. Next thing we see, <laughs> Riley and Nancy Sachs <laughs> meet up over a conversation where he's kind of upset with the way her tactics are trying to get in on Tariq. Mm -hmm. He's upset that she he thinks she's having sex with Reek when it's really she's messing around with Brayden or about yeah. to mess around with Brayden. And I thought that that conversation was funny because she is one of these young people nowadays don't really know what they are. She says she's polyamorous yeah. she don't know she want to be in a monogamous relationship bisexual she's that thing she's that tessa try. thompson is whatever i mean she's she's got more handles than an antler a deer antler i couldn't figure it out mm -hmm. do you like her character her character is annoying to me kind of yeah kind she's, of. she's very kind annoying of. i mean it's funny to watch her kind of interact with people mm -hmm. um but yeah, she's annoying. She seems like, I guess the apple don't fall too far from the tree when it comes to being Cooper Sacks' Uncle Nancy's niece because she's doing some some screwed up stuff too. She's messing up quite a bit too. Yeah, she's a, she's a yeah, F up. Yeah. And now her heart is kind of involved, which is going to lead to more F and up. Is it her heart or is she just, she sees the benefits? Because she said, okay, yeah. she said he's rich, he's 
well, privileged. Privileged. He's, he's, white. he's white, just yeah. like her uncle. Mm-hmm. So I think she just sees a, a boy toy to play with or somebody to take her on this adventure. Well, okay, let's say her heart's not involved. But even if you have a toy, you like that toy for a reason. So maybe your yeah. heart ain't involved. Because she but... can get over. I mean, he's buying alcohol. And, yeah. yeah, so you like the boy toy for uh-huh. you getting that too yeah. on top of that. Get, so mm-hmm. so you uh, so and when, it, when push comes to shove for anybody in situations like this, if you decide you want to either tell or leave that situation, you have to weigh in your head, do I want to give up all these goodies? Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Is she going to want to give up all the goodies to be true to Nancy, or is she going to want to keep the goodies because she wants to keep it for herself? That's what it's going to come. The, the white privilege, the Braden, and uh-huh. everything Braden brings to the table. Braden uh-huh. penis, too. Mm-hmm. Is she going to want to give up all them goodies to be faithful to Nancy? That's what it's going to come right. down to. Since sooner or later. I don't think that this was a secret, <laughs> but Drew reveals to Tariq that the whole family knows he's gay. And before this event, Tariq went to the house with Cain uh-huh. and, you know, Monet basically tested him to see who he would stay loyal to. He stayed pretty loyal to Drew. Right. He didn't know who that picture was uh, right. of 24. Mm-hmm. How, what do you think is going to happen with this relationship with Drew and Tariq? Because Tariq seems to kind of like Drew, yeah. which makes me think Drew's going to die. <laughs> what you think? Um, well, Drew feels, I, I mean... I think it ingratiated himself with Drew by letting Drew know that um, he had kind of had his back in the situation with Monet, Monet, even though he didn't have to have his back. Mm-hmm. So Drew thought, I mean, uh, Tariq thought it was a secret, but Drew let him know, no, everybody know I'm gay, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I don't know how that's going to play out. Like I said, I think there is a genuine, genuine friendship somewhat budding between the two of them. Um, Cause he did tell Tariq to take care of himself mm-hmm. before he left the left the wherever they were at. He did, yeah. So it, you you can kind of see something sparking from that. Maybe it, it, ladies and gentlemen, it could be one of these days that Tariq something happens to Monet and Tariq fills Monet's spot mm-hmm. because it seems like all the kids are kind of have a liking for Tariq. Mm-hmm. Kane reluctantly like res- he don't like Kane. him. No, yeah. Kane don't like him, but he respects his mentality. But Kane is also there's some jealousy there too. So I think I can I, see. I don't. I don't think there's jealousy toward Reek until maybe the very end of this episode. It seems to me like Kane is more in awe by Tariq's intelligence of mm-hmm. the street game. Mm-hmm. Diana, we know what's going on with her, and we're already seeing this building between him and Drew. Mm-hmm. So I can easily see one of these days the turn on Monet could happen, and Tariq fills that spot. But we'll see. I think Tariq is getting into Kane's head. Um, and I think Kane, I think Kane is disposable to Tariq unless he can use him as the muscle. If he had to choose between Tariq and and Drew, I think I think Tariq is gonna get close to Drew and eventually pit him against Kane. Yeah, but like you said, he could use Kane for something. What can he use yeah. Drew for? But when it comes to cutting ties, when it's time to make his big move, um, he's gonna cut, get rid of Kane and keep Drew. Maybe. Well, I don't see that because he needs he needs Kane's muscle. Because who, who does he but have for muscle? But they're moving Drew to be in position um, to run the organization. We think Drew that. Drew got his daddy's ear. We, we think, that, well, yeah, he does have his daddy's ear. But his daddy's in jail. And mm-hmm. somebody's got to de- oper- do the day-to-day operations. And if we're thinking that Tariq could probably somehow or another supersede Monet... He's going to need muscle. Mm-hmm. And Kane, Kane is going to have to be the muscle. If Kane falls in line. If and Kane ain't line, really falling in line. We don't think. We'll see. we'll see. We'll see. The next scene was Braden at the store getting drug, getting uh, alcohol for um, Tariq's birthday party. And I'm thinking to myself, Braden, do you hear how this lady's asking you a million questions? Right. Like now, ladies and gentlemen, I've been in situations with people who are asking me a million questions when I was very, very young. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what their purpose was, but later on I learned (laughs) they're probably a ninja, they're probably in jail with the police, whatever. And I'm thinking to myself, Brayden, she is doing this so blatantly. Right. And she's trying to date you, but she's asking you a million and one questions about Tariq. Right. In the store. Right. Like, you spoke... Come on, what was he thinking? 
And not he wasn't thinking. He was thinking about her panty draws, and he was thinking about alcohol and going having that party. I think he was more so. I only think panty draws came in his mind. There, I think he was really thinking, focusing on trying to get Tariq this birthday party because mm -hmm. that's his boy. They doing this business together. Right. Whenever you have a friend and it's and y'all y'all are friends and y'all are making business work together, it makes you feel next level toward that person. Mm -hmm. Anyone that I have been in business with and the business starts properly, I automatically start feeling closer with that person. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what kind of the way he's feeling. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, white folks that are privileged, they love throwing these big shindigs. You watch The Real Housewives. Mm -hmm. Every one of them throw these humongous shindigs for everybody's birthday. I'm like, damn, lady, you 62 years old. What the... You ain't had enough birthday parties yet? Damn. No, she don't got that many left, so she want to enjoy. Okay. Next scene was a telling scene. I knew something was going to happen. I knew they wasn't setting this up for nothing. I just didn't know what was going to happen in this episode. Mm -hmm. Professor Jabari meets with his agent slash person corresponding with the publishing organization over the book. Mm -hmm. The brother says, hey, look, man, you did good, but this last book was trash. I don't know how much I can keep covering for you, yada, yada, yada. Now I'm starting to get myself uplifted with the white people, making white people money in essence is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And Jabari, you have to be twice as good. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that, in, that interaction? Meanwhile, during that same scene, Tariq walks in and gives him a 25-page paper. Right. I mean, it tells you t Jabari is about to get desperate. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So he's about to get exactly. desperate. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And I hear the little yeah. one chomping yeah, go, up. Yeah, go get the baby and bring her on back in here. Next scene, we see Ta Ta Tariq pop up at Tamika's house. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, there was so much stuff going on in Tamika's house, you would have thought that that was somebody's state fair, ladies and gentlemen. He pops up at Tamika's house, basically telling her that, look, Tommy Egan is the one who killed um, Ghost. And I'm afraid for my life. And Tamika know better. Tamika ain't having none of it. She basically tells Tariq, I'm taking that stand. We see Tariq get his gun in position. I never thought that at any point in time during that scene that Tamika was going to die. And then you hear somebody banging on the door. Here we go. Munchkin Land is in the building. We hear somebody <laughs> banging on the door. In walks Davis McLean at Tamika's house. Mm -hmm. Expand on the Davis McLean to read Tamika scene at her house. I mean, what just stood out to me is that everybody's showing up at her door. And well, I would have been spooked with Tariq showing up there last minute because you don't know what he's there for. Right. And she was just all casually letting him in, yeah. walking around her house and offering water. turning her back to him. I'm like, Offering okay. water. Right. And, right. Then, and then when he said, I want the water... And then she gets the water. He's like, nah, I ain't thirsty no more. Oh, right, right. And yeah. she's supposed to be an officer of the law. Yeah, she, she should know better. Yeah, and Davis McClain pops in, basically thinking Cooper Saxon. Now, first of all, Davis McClain, Tamika, we know you got balls on you. You just let him barge in like that and he ain't have no, no repercussions Asking for it? Asking who here, who here. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and right. then just, and easily just give it up and say, oh, okay, ain't nobody here. Okay. <laughs> Because you don't see them sitting on the couch. There ain't nobody there. Meth the cow. Well, what was he going to do? Go and inspect her whole house? Yeah. Meth McLean, boy. Next scene, we, we at this party now. They having a party for Tariq. All the stars and shoots popping up in that, that party. All right? Mm -hmm. Moving right along the party. Riley is spiking Brayden's drink. Mm -hmm. But somehow, some way, that drink, Exchanges hands. It ends up with Tariq. Ends up with Tariq. Uh -huh. <laughs> what What did you expect was going to happen in that scene? I that mean, whole part of the scene. She Nancy Junior. She Nancy two point So you know something was going to go wrong. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You knew it was going to be a major f up. And first of all, Nancy didn't even want her talking to Tariq or anything, or even putting drugs involved in the situation, anything right. like that. But he did it, mm -hmm. and. You had Diana pop up in there. You had Zeke pop up in there. You had Drew pop up in there. You had Laura pop up in had there. Had Laura pop up in there. And they all was looking good, by the way. Everybody popped up in there was looking their best. I'm ready for a party. Uh -huh. But here's the things that happened in that party. Drew gets dissed by uh, Eduardo, whatever oh, his goodness. name is. Heart was broken, ran out the he, door. He, That's what we expect. He hightailed out of there mm -hmm. so fast, I was cracking up. Yeah. <laughs> he, but, I mean, that's what you expect in that situation. For uh -huh. them to run their ass out the door sad and disappointed. Um, 
I'll come back to that in a minute. We'll we'll finish up that wild party in a minute. But that Drew thing was funny. Him running out the door, he was <laughs> sick, and homeboy just dissed him. Uh -huh. like, like, bro. Hey, what's uh -uh. Up? Let's talk about Jabari and Professor Megram. He meets up with her, basically saying, you know, he's disappointed. He can't get none of his books to work. And we later learn, as I said last week, and we didn't even know this, the only reason his book sold the first time was because he was talking about Professor Megram. Mm -hmm. And she basically tells him, write what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. I know what you were thinking. What? Is somebody going to lock that door again? That's oh. And God, my... No. And I was rooting for my girl, and she done the right thing, and then I had to get right back mad at her. Mm -hmm. I'm, about to, I'm about to fuss mm -hmm. her out for what she done in this episode. Boy, mm, yeah. mm, mm, mm. If, she if somebody would have locked the door, what happened in the end of the episode wouldn't happen. See? See? I mean, it wouldn't. See? If you had to choose between her messing up getting back with Jabari or her messing up with old oh boy, with uh... I was, I was so... I, I'm, I'm off the Professor Megram bandwagon. I will get to that in a minute. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. That cup gets passed to Reek. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be in the um, intoxicate Brayden. Mm -hmm. Reek leaves Diana because he fully knows why Diana is there with him. Right. Trying to siphon information. Yeah. Goes upstairs with Lauren, who he says, damn, you looking good for my birthday. Mm -hmm. And he tries to start messing with her, but she's like, I don't want it to be like this because you're drunk. Mm -hmm. She done the right thing. Uh-huh. Then Nancy's niece Riley. Now, did she do the right thing? Cause I'm looking at this. What, chick. what did you want her to do? Let him do it? No, but I mean, when he just passed out on the couch. <laughs> but it, it, it's his house, ain't it? No, it's uh the brother's house. Yeah, but still, oh. the fact that no, I thought they all sharing the house. The brother got a room. Reed got a room. Regardless, he was drinking, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he just passed out the way he did, and she leaves him there. What you? What, what I think it, I mean she's a probably friend, thinking she she's probably thinking he's drunk she, not not dead it happened so fast she don't know and she just left up out of the room with him just vulnerable in there I thought that was a little little well shady. that that's very sweet of you oh, to call a man vulnerable. now if it was a woman I mean granted it's bottom that, line that's right that's it, what I was gonna say it's very sweet of you okay. to say the man was vulnerable right but that means you're thinking if it was a woman I'm thinking you're about gonna, safety yeah, but this is woman. this is a grown a man uh -huh. but still me and be taking his, advantage of it but it's well. his house and you're his friend it's his house it's a party going on I can outside. get if he's at some foreign house but it's his house what if it's a woman and she's in there it, it's her house and she passes out like that on the couch and, I, the and, and I'm a man trying to pursue her I'm going to make sure she's taken care of uh huh and she's a woman trying to pursue him I think the same thing should go but down. she's got a man she ain't acting like it <laughs> <laughs> what she did when she left his butt in there drunk See, what I'm just saying comes is, right back to me. What I'm just saying is, mm -hmm. I thought that was a little shady that she just left him up in there vulnerable. I don't, because she's thinking he passed out from alcohol. He's going to sleep it off. And she says she did not want to mess around with him under the influence, which says she has a small shred of integrity. Very mm -hmm. small. Yeah, but she not a lot. Better. Not a lot, just a very small she shred. She should know better. Because you <laughs> see who came lurking up in there right behind her. <laughs> <laughs> this was funny. Now we back to Drew and Everett in the car arguing. Mm -hmm. Everett reveals he don't want nobody to know he's gay for the NBA. Drew's like, F you, be yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of of the mindset, just be who you are. Mm -hmm. But we do have to understand we live in a country where plenty of people that watch this channel got mad because they let gay scenes be in this show. So that's exactly what Everett is talking about. Mm -hmm. He don't want anyone in the NBA to know he's gay. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. If you think that these sports have been around this long and ain't nobody in them locker rooms ever been gay, you got another thing coming. But in his mind, his mind, if he comes out now, it could ruin his chances. Mm -hmm. It could you know, mess it up. And then Diana comes over there, looks in the car, blah, blah, blah. What would you think about the whole... <laughs> Everett drew Diana in the car scene. Uh -huh. They loved them in the car scenes on Power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's what's his name? Everett. He went stomping off because he realized that they're related to one of his teammates. Yep. And related he's worried, to Zeke. He's worried that it's going to get out. Mm-hmm. 
So in terms of, do you think they're going to have a relationship moving forward? Or you think he's done with Drew? Mm, he's not done with Drew, but he's not going to, he's not going to be dealing with Drew in public. No, mm -hmm. he's still going to want to get that hot jump off, but they're not going to be dealing with each other in public. Right. And, and this is the battle people who are For in now. the, right. This yeah. is the battle people who the LGBT community go through. I would like to come out, but because it's still taboo in this country and a lot of places, I shouldn't come out. Mm -hmm. Drew is like, F it. Just be who you are. Right. Just, just, I mean, you'll be happier being who you are. Just F it. Mm -hmm. um, but the man's thinking about his paper. I can understand both perspectives. But I, I'm kind of saying that I'm more of the mindset of just be who you are. Yeah. Considering where we're at now. Maybe if this was slavery days, no. You better hide that shit. But now... Slavery days? You mean like, say, 10 years ago. Okay. Ten, yeah. Go you, back 10 years ago. You still ago. got families disowning you. You yeah. probably don't have the rest of the team shunning you. It's, yeah. It's a, it's a big... Yeah, decision. it's a thing. That's why yeah. I said it's a thing. That's yeah. why, you know, I mean, hey. <laughs> this is the part where I jump off the Professor Megram cruise ship. She meets up with Zeke. He leaves the party, talks about his daddy ain't around, his mama is staying with his aunt, yada, yada, yada. Gives Professor Megram a sad story. Hey, sweetie. Sees, sees Jabbar. Dad, girl, you hot? <laughs> no, you hot? No, she was trying to nurse What's on What's wrong with arm. you? You hot? She was trying to nurse on oh. her <laughs> Anyway, long story, forget, forget all the antics. Professor Megrew and Jabari smash, and I'm done with Professor Megrew. You will not hear me talking about Professor Megrew on this thing no more. You're I'm right. done. You're I'm done. Right. What did you think was going to happen with that? She is no better than Jabari I now. was so irritated by that scene. Um, me too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's up with these professors at this college? This is ridiculous. Uh, this happens at all colleges. It does, but it's like they putting on this right. Let's we need to be righteous and uphold the community, and they running around. But Jabari is worse about oh, it. Oh goodness, he's really worse. Hey, baby, right. he's the, he's the worst about that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so are they gonna have that relationship moving forward? So do you think do you think it's gonna happen again between her and probably uh -huh. be, because she basically you in essence she's used Zeke. To, because she wanted Jabari to masquerade her feelings as a bridge over Jabari. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. is somebody gonna pop up pregnant later? Oh, oh lord! <laughs> See, just when I was thinking maybe I would give Professor Megram one more chance, you just ruined all that. Mm -hmm. Just, just no more chances for, for, for Professor Megram. Now back to that party where Tariq fell out, and Lauren left him. This would go to highlight your point earlier. Well, she should have got him to safety somewhere. I don't know where safety's at when you're already in your own house, okay? But Riley comes up in, in the room, grabs his phone, uses Face ID to unlock his phone, turn on location connection to her phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How is that going to play out in this story? <laughs> um, they got a tail on Tariq for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Anywhere Tariq... I mean, I guess... You would think late he's probably gonna figure it out eventually. Right. I think he's already looking at Riley with a side eye as well. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, um, what's his his roommate? Hopefully, Brayden. Room, hopefully, Brayden is going to put two and two together and realize that you know she's trying to get intel on Tariq. Right. So you, you I don't hope. think it's gonna go too far, but they are gonna be able to get free information off Tariq. From yeah, this they're, point gonna be, they're gonna be gonna be a change. And now back to Professor Megram and, and Zeke. One thing I just gotta say that bothers me: <laughs> Don't you hate the cliche line? No, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do this. I'm done with her, man. Hmm. Then we see we finally see Tariq come out of the party. Diana's sitting on the stump, looking sad. Reaches into his backpack, grabs his gun. I didn't see what the point of that was. <laughs> Unless she was worried he was going to be running, roaming around the street with a gun and it can fall out anywhere. But what was what was the point of that? To give it to her mama. To say, mama, this is his gun. I don't know what she, what what's going to happen with the gun. But anyway, then we get back to old. I'm going to have to, since we're going to call, since we're going to call Cooper Sacks Nancy, I'm going to have to call Jabari Punk A because... Jabari made Tariq write that paper. Uh -huh. And then, after he meet with his publicist, hey, baby, gets Tariq's paper, and it's still in lines from Tariq's paper. Right. Didn't you see that coming? Yeah. Yeah, because he's desperate. Mm -hmm. Initially, I thought 
I'm like, okay, he he can't possibly like get Tariq to write a whole book, right? So I guess right. is he's gonna use that as a theme for his book or what he gonna do with it? But uh, and how is that gonna come back to bite him in the end? Right. Because you know Tariq is gonna find but, out potentially. He's, pre- pre- Professor Megram may yep. may find out. He's gonna he, Jabari is gonna be a slave to Tariq to the school. And possibly the Stearns. Mm-hmm. It's gonna happen. So how it's is gonna Tariq happen. gonna use that to his advantage? That's what I'm, he's uh-huh. gonna he's gonna be a slave to Tariq. Right. It's just how is Tariq gonna make it used? Then Riley meets up with Cooper Sacks to say that she she tried to drug Braden but wound up drugging Tariq. Get his phone. <laughs> Cooper Sacks is just hot and is able to put location tracking on her phone or wherever mm-hmm. Reek's phone is. And then Cooper Sacks tracks Reek. To Raina and her daddy's grave where he records Reek going off on the daddy while Reek was still drunk. And I must say, even though Reek was supposed... Reek won't drunk no more by that point in time. He, I mean, he was acting like he was drunk. I mean, His acting was not that good to me. Su- I was not convinced. But we're supposed to be under the impression that he was drunk. Because didn't... Uh, Ghost did the same thing, right? Didn't he go to the he, grave site? Yeah, he did. Drunk and confessing everything mm-hmm, at everything. the grave site? He did. Yeah. So that's just more highlighting... You Reek, are your dead. Reek is Ghost. Uh-huh. Yep. Then the next scene was straight from the trailer. Tariq breaks down the chess pieces to Brayden. And I said this right on my trailer review. Mm-hmm. Where he's letting Brayden know who are the most powerful pieces. You saw that coming. Right. Now, do you think that Braden is going to be able to conduct himself properly if all goes down? Because in one incident, he told him, you know, knock over all the pieces if you have to. Mm-hmm. But then he also told him who ranks what and what piece right. represents what. How do you think Braden is going to behave if under pressure? I think Braden, I mean, I have a new sense of uh, confidence in Braden's yeah. ability to pull mm-hmm. this off. Um, he's still like an immature college student, whatever, all about parties, whatever. But when it comes to, um, I guess, having Tariq backs and taking care of business, he, he's shown that he's able to do that. Mm-hmm. And so they have this man up or this man to man conversation where he's telling Tariq, you have to let me know what's going on so mm-hmm. that I can have your back and we can make this work. Right. And, and, yeah. and I would have been pissed too if I was great. No, you should be. He did that. He put that party together. And Tariq just, just poo pooed all over it. Basically. Um, in and, front of everybody. Well, I think I, I think we just seen where they're going with the story uh-huh. because Tariq just gave his complete allegiance to Braden. Mm-hmm. He put it all on the table for Braden. That's his side. That, that's his boy. That's his Robin. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, but you know, Robin is cool, y'all. If y'all don't know Batman, Nightwing and Robin are cool characters. They almost are standalones. Diana gives the gun to Monet and she's pissed. Mm-hmm. And, and and basically Monet is saying the same thing you said. Girl, why the hell you take this gun for? What was the point? Mm-hmm. And Diana's like, I couldn't get Tariq to do nothing. I couldn't get Tariq to do nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> do you think that when is that relationship gonna fracture between Diana and Monet? Uh, I don't really see that fracturing. It's gonna fracture. Tariq gonna got... fracture it because uh, you, yeah. because you T- saw in the end Tariq gonna fracture. Tariq, Tariq walks in the house and she says, "Which one of my children can I trust?" And Tariq looked around, looked at Kane, and said, "Me." Uh-huh. And Kane had to give him that gun. Yeah. <laughs> now you know Kane is pissed because he already gave his mama the whole mantra of you know family loyalty to family first. And this dude about to walk up in here and say, "You, I'm more loyal. You can trust me more than you can trust you can trust him more than you can trust your own son." But you can cool believe that that gun that Tariq had that really belonged to Ghost and Tommy is gonna come back. Mm-hmm. All right, and the last two points we're gonna cover: Braden's brother stole the drugs, so you're gonna to have to keep up with that. Uh-huh. He came in the room. Oh, he, Braden's brother found their little stash and stole the drugs, so that's gonna be an issue. Braden's brother is a liability. He's so he, he's all the way. You you, know, you gotta know he's gonna die. Right. And then the last most important part. But what is Braden gonna do? He still has some love for his brother, so he I don't think he gonna let. For example, he wasn't about to let Tariq just, you know. Well, Tariq ain't got to kill him. Kane can kill him. He could. Kane can kill him. That's what could happen. But, yeah. And the, the, the last most important part for me, the part that highlights the title of this thing, The Gift of the Maggie. And I told y'all in the very beginning of this review what The Gift of the Maggie's definition is. So if you missed it, go to the very beginning. 
Cooper Sacks, Davis McClain, decided they're at an impasse and they form a deal to, instead of dealing with Tasha, mm -hmm. they just both going to get what they want by putting Tariq in jail. Right. Right. Touchdown. We know it ain't going to happen, though. These two are giving each other a gift. Mm -hmm. And what they're both, but the most important part are the two parts that are giving. McClain needs Sacks. Sacks needs McClain. And the gift is Tariq. But do McClain know he's dealing with Nancy? But do Nancy know how dirty McClain is? I'm sure Nancy know how dirty McClain is, but do McClain know how much of an F, F up, up Cooper Sacks is? Right. He obviously do. He done seen the issue with, he's seen the issue with this one case. Right. He's gone and done the background history. He's so you making a deal with somebody who just, if there's any way, even when there's no way to mess something up, he gonna find a way. He gonna find a way. So, so basically what he's gonna figure out is simple as this. Look. He's going to have the plan that somewhere along the way, Cooper Sacks is going to mess up. Mm -hmm. he, that's going to have to be in his plan. Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I like the episode. I, I felt, enjoyed it, too. I felt like it was a good episode for them to continue to be a standalone series. They didn't have to bring in Tommy. They didn't have to introduce new characters. Nobody got missing. The only thing I don't like is how long this break is going to take. But this is power, and they've been doing it each and every year. So that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. For those of you that like to see the baby, she woke up this time. You can subscribe and like because you like to see the baby. Be sure to follow me and Larry live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights at 9 p.m. Where we cover power, we cover other TV shows, we cover other things in the black community, and we definitely do politics and finances, in particular stocks. And until that next sexy as hell video, we'll see you.